Yeah, 30th of November, 30th of November 2023. Uh, it's good morning, or is it good afternoon? Good afternoon, no. Good afternoon from John Hammond in Norwich, UK, and... Good afternoon from Trevor. Um, we're going to be looking at Ephesians 2, verses 1 to 10, and then 13 to 22. Mm. So if Trevor can open with prayer, and then... Yeah, Father, we thank you this day, we thank you for this opportunity to share your word, and Father, we acknowledge you today, mighty God, creator, heavenly Father, Son of the living God, Holy Spirit. We acknowledge you, Father, and pray you'll guide us, teach us, give us wisdom, enlighten us today by your Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. So Trevor's going to read from Ephesians 2, yeah. 1 to 10. Yes, that's it. Okay. Made alive in Christ. As for you... You were dead in your transgressions and sins, in which you used to live when you followed the ways of this world, and of the ruler of the kingdom of the air, the spirit who is now at work in those who are disobedient. All of us also lived among them at one time, gratifying the cravings of our flesh and following its desires and thoughts. Like the rest, we were by nature deserving of wrath. But because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ, even when we were dead in transgressions. It is by grace you have been saved. And God raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus, in order that in the coming ages he might show the incomparable riches of his grace expressed in his kindness to us in Christ Jesus. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not from yourselves, it is the gift of God, not by works so that no one can boast. For we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. Amen. 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 Verse 6. And God raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus. In Christ Jesus. You're either in Christ or you're not in Christ. It's as clear as that. Verse 8. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith and this is not from yourselves it is the gift of God not by works so that no one can boast for we are God's workmanship created in Christ Jesus to do good works which God prepared in advance for us to do. Now hold that thought, verse 10. We'll come back to that, God willing. Moving on to verse 13. But now, in Christ Jesus, you, who once were far away, have been brought near through the blood of Christ. There is no other way to be saved except by the blood of Jesus Christ. Verse 14. For he himself, Christ, he is our peace. He who has made the two one. And he has destroyed the barrier, the dividing wall of hostility. By abolishing in his flesh the law with its commandments and regulations. His purpose was to create in himself one new man out of the two, thus making peace, and in this one body to reconcile both of them to God through the cross, by which he put to death their hostility. He came and preached peace to you who were far away 
and peace to those who were near. For through him we both have access to the Father by the one Spirit, Holy Spirit. Verse 19. Consequently, you are no longer foreigners and aliens, but fellow citizens with God's people and members of God's household, built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, with Christ Jesus himself as the chief cornerstone. In him, the whole building is joined together and rises to become a holy temple in the Lord. One holy temple in the one Lord Jesus Christ, the real Jesus, the genuine Christ, the only begotten Son of God, not created, but begotten of God himself. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, Yahweh, Yeshua Messiah, Jesus Christ. God is one. The Godhead. Verse 22. And in him, Christ, you too are being built up together to become a dwelling, a dwelling, one dwelling, in which God lives by his Holy Spirit. So let's just go back to verse... Verse 10. For we are God's workmanship, created in Christ to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. One example today. Trevor and I have been on a journey in the clipper, going from one place to another, being led by the Holy Spirit, to eventually end up in a car park of a drive-through cafe. And as we were there, we were talking, listening, showing the signs, Jesus loves you, to whosoever. A hundred or so or more customers passing by to be told today, Jesus loves you. Eventually, soon, we were about to leave soon after this, but eventually a, a young man in his car wants to drive next to the clipper and I sh shut my door to allow him to do so and we recognize each other. He's a young man from one of the European countries who w used to, with he and his two friends, go to a Pentecostal church building we used to go to. He recognized me, I recognized him. And we had instant fellowship with the Holy Spirit. We caught up with each other. Are you still going on in the Lord? Yes, he said. Are you okay? Yes, I am. And, and look who's here, and he recognized Trevor. So this young man just happened to come there in his car right next to the sign, Jesus loves you. And after we caught up, this was what we just read. Jesus had prepared an opportunity for some good works to encourage him in the faith. And it turns out that this man, a European, has uh, uh, seven of his nationals with him on a Sunday, meeting together as the body of Christ, as a group of nationals from a European country to encourage each other as members of the body of Christ. And I asked him, do you break bread? Yes. We remember the Lord. And bear in mind, all of this is in the Holy Spirit. And he's telling me the truth. He's a humble young man telling me the truth. 
So I invited him to the men's breakfast that Trevor and I go to in, in uh, Norwich, UK, to encourage him in the faith. And bear in mind, he's a younger generation and we need a balance. Young men of God and older men of God, mature men of God, younger men of God. But he's quite mature in his faith, his understanding, his journey. Born again, filled with the Spirit, part of a body of Christ with eight members meeting together. I reminded him of 1 Corinthians 14, prophesy one to another, yes, test and weigh everything, yes, keep going forwards in Christ, don't look back, remember Lot's wife, even while she was being rescued, she disobeyed God, looked back and was lost. And that's a word for us today, all of us, in Christ, going heavenwards, don't look back. Luke 9.62, Philippians 3, Isaiah 43, 18-21. Forget the former things, says God. See, I am doing a new thing. So there it was. Jesus Christ created for us an opportunity to meet this young man by what we call now a divine appointment, set up in time for us to be there and for him to come and park right next to the clipper. We caught up in the Holy Spirit with each other. I gave him a reminder. John 15, Romans 11. Christ, God, is the root and we are the branches. And of course, he accepted that. He's born of God. He knows the truth. And the Holy Spirit reminded him today and he was humble to take it. Not arrogant. I know that. Why are you telling me I know that? He was a humble young man who was reminded by the Holy Spirit of the truth today. Don't worry about tomorrow. Today. Don't worry about yesterday. Isaiah 43, 18 to 21, forget the former things. Forgive and forget. And the reason people say, I forgive but I can't forget, is because they don't really forgive. They're not really forgiving. They, they're just lip service. Father, forgive me for my trespasses as I forgive those who have trespassed against me. That's the reality of faith, to obey God. So he was told, we are told, John 15, Romans 11, Jesus is the root, God is the root, and we are the branches. And the branches, we exist to, pro to produce good fruit in keeping with our repentance, and the fruit, of course, is the fruit of the Holy Spirit. So, we encouraged him in the faith. His faith is our encouragement. And we're going to pray for him. I have his phone number. I already had his phone number. And he confirmed it by calling me and pray for him to come to the men's group once a month and be encouraged in the faith. So today, recognize, because you're born again, because you are washed clean by the blood of Jesus, because your temple is clean by the blood, cleansed, your spirit is clean, by the blood of Jesus Christ. You are born again. You are new this morning. A new day of God's mercy, God's compassion, God's grace towards you. And your temple is meant to be occupied by the Holy Spirit himself. 
So you can say it's no longer you who live, it's Christ who lives in you for his plan, his purpose. And wherever we go, we can tell people that God, Jesus, has a plan for you, a plan for your good, not for your harm. So pray for another person we met in a supermarket, someone who is open to receive that truth, that Jesus, God, has a plan for your life. This person has no vision. They can't see where they'll be in five years. So they were told, receive the Holy Spirit. He will show you with dreams and visions where you're going. Keep a journal. And if we meet you here again, you can share with us what Jesus is telling you by the Holy Spirit through dreams and visions. And this person said, they smiled, they received it, and they said, no pressure, no pressure then, and laughed in a good way. So we pray for that person to receive the Holy Spirit. God has said, Acts 1 and 2, that he will pour out his Spirit on all people. Dreams and visions. And to receive the Holy Spirit, you must submit to the Spirit of the living God. You must obey Christ as your shepherd. It's one thing to say you love Jesus, but it's another thing to obey him. Jesus said, my sheep, my sheep hear my voice, and they obey. Jesus is taking his sheep increasingly away from every spirit of this world every spirit, not just Sodom and Gomorrah, but every spirit, as in the days of Noah. As in the days of Noah. Jesus is the refuge. Jesus is the strong tower. Jesus is not an organization. You can't join the body of Christ. You can't invite yourself to be a member of Christ. And you can't invite others to join in the body of Christ. You can lead them to Christ. You can lead them to the cross. You can preach the gospel. But the Holy Spirit is the one who draws them to understand the need for, their, for them to repent and to mean it, to receive Christ, to receive forgiveness of sins, to receive the blood of Jesus, to cleanse them, to receive the Holy Spirit and to obey Christ, believe and be baptized with fire, to have your temple cleansed by the blood of the Lamb and then receive the Holy Spirit in your spirit. And there are many soulish churchgoers and they only go to church for the social side of life. They love the social side where their emotions are stroked psychologically, where they are hugged and welcomed and hugged and stroked and their years are told what they want to hear. But they're churchgoers, not born of God, not repented of sins. They haven't received the Holy Spirit in the depth of their being, their human spirit. The temple for the Holy Spirit is the human spirit, a, a, a temple not made by human hands. No man can create the spirit of man. God is the creator. The uncreated creator has created every human spirit. And it's for you to get to know God, the God who's seeking you. And I mean Jesus. Jesus, the shepherd, is seeking his sheep. And if you hear Jesus' voice, that makes you a sheep. 
but you must obey what the shepherd is saying. And I'm not talking about a man who calls himself a shepherd. I'm talking about the spirit of the living God is calling us to leave all the nations behind. And that includes the denominations who are as worldly as the world is worldly. God himself is forming a holy nation from out of the nations. Nothing to do with the United Nations. So be encouraged. Jesus loves you. He's got a plan for your life. Read Ephesians, the whole book. See the context of Ephesians 2, that chapter. But see the context. Unity in the body of Christ. Go back to your first love. Ask God to cut off every branch in you that is not producing good, Holy Spirit fruit. Allow God to graft you in to the cultivated olive tree, to the cultivated vine, neither of which are rooted in the world because we're rooted in God, Jesus Christ. And the purpose is to produce good fruit in keeping with your repentance, the fruit of the Holy Spirit. So we're going to close it there. And uh, I'll ask Trevor to close with prayer. Yeah, Father, we thank you once again for your word. And we pray, Lord, your word will, um, as it is sown as he will, will um, bear fruit, uh, be rooted in our spirits and bear good fruit. So bless you, brothers and sisters. Remember, this is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. And God is working in us to bring about unity between brothers so, yes, Lord, thank you. Thank you for this message. Um, we pray, Lord, it will bear good fruit in our lives. In the name of Jesus, amen. Amen. Yes, God is uh, uniting us. Men and men, women and women, couples and couples. Unity in God's plan. Remember holiness. No wife swapping. No holy hugging. I've said this before. If your husband is hugging other women, then you've got a problem in your marriage. And vice versa. If your wife is going around hugging all the men, that's because you're not hugging her properly, husband. The sanctity of marriage, biblical marriage, is the church of two. Holiness sets us apart, our biblical marriages. And that's a subject we've dealt with before, so you can look back on the videos what a biblical marriage is. As Christ loves the church. God bless you. Keep praying. And we'll talk again by the grace of God. One day of salvation at a time. God bless you. God bless from Trevor. <laughs>